I was stuck at Hard Fire Night 6 for the longest time, but I switched out one champion, and that took me from doing Hard Fire Night 6 to consistently farming Hard Fire Night 10. Now, you might know about this team. Uh, one of my old raid mentors, who doesn't play raid anymore, his name is Tavish, built this team for me. It's a double ally attack team. He's from the NZ, the, tombs of Na uh, the Tomb of Nazareth uh, cluster. Uh, he and a bunch of other people from that cluster uh, have long since quit raid, getting tired of Polarium and, and, <laughs> and everything going on. But uh, yeah, he built this team for me, and it's a double ally attack team. Incorporating Cardiel using his ally attack and Farrakhan the Fat using his ally attack with Kaimar to reset so that those ally attacks can keep procking. Stagnite is going to be here to place the decrease defense and the decrease attack as well as the decrease speed with a two hitter on his A1 as well. And then our star player is going to be Nut. Nut is going to help clear out the waves as well as do the EMHP moves when we get to the boss. He also has a three hitter with his A1 that also places Freeze, helping to push back the turn meter of the Hard Fire Knight. So here you see, turn count for the shield is at 18, dropping down all the way to 10. Farrakhan the Fat is going to go ahead and do his ally attack move, bringing it down to 2. Then Stagnite with his 2 hitter is going to bring down the shield, place the decrease speed. Now it's important you have decrease speed if you're trying to get into the higher levels of Hard Fire Knight. And it's also important you have somebody like Nut with a Freeze on his A1 with a multi-hitter. The Hard Fire Knight cannot have his turn meter decreased, but it can be decreased if you're trying to place freezes on him. So he takes the freeze that you tried to place on him, and uh, instead he gets his turn meter decreased. So it's important you have somebody like Nut or Creaton or Neldor Rhymeblade. I have uh, a guide on Neldor Rhymeblade. In fact, I was actually the first content creator to put out a guide for Neldor Rhymeblade. But this is the entire team here. It's consistent. I've been doing this team for quite some time now, uh, for the better part of a year. But when I tried to take this team, and I tried to go into Hard Fire Knight 10, the issue was that I probably just wasn't going fast enough, and I wasn't willing to compromise the gear from other champions in my roster. But I did take one champion and put him in this team. And I actually got this idea from Gavin Masters Raid, this team took me from doing Hard Fire Knight 6 all the way to consistently farming Hard Fire Knight 10. Razzlevarg actually provides a multi-hitter on his A1 as well as a turn meter boost. Leech, which also keeps the team alive, as well as the increased speed buff for the entire team. So now the entire team is going 30% faster. So we have the decreased speed on the Hard Fire Knight and now we're going to have the increased speed. On top of that, this Energizer Bunny is relentless. He can't be stopped. He increases his speed up to 100 points for every increased speed buff that is placed by him. Let me show you guys how everybody is built. Our new star player is going to be the Energizer Bunny, Razzlevarg. He is in Divine Speed and Relentless so that he can get that chance to proc extra turns on top of already going faster. So here are the pieces of gear that are on him if you want to reference that. Uh, of course, you could make him faster by glyphing him up. In fact, I think I will get around to doing that. And here it is. Of course, Ascension on speed. Change that out later. We're basically prioritizing speed on him. Here are his stats. 222 is honestly not that fast. 5k attack, almost. Well, I guess four, closer to 4.5k. Almost crit capped, and then 282 crit damage. I do use this Razzlevark in uh, Hydra. These are the masteries. As always, do not blindly copy masteries, but feel free to blindly copy masteries. Here's Cardiel. He's all speed. Here are his stats, if you want to check out his stats. And also, if you didn't know, you can actually click the area of bonus right here. I just learned this. And, um, well, well, relatively just learned this. I think it was Das who was in stream and told me this. But you can check your arena bonuses or area bonuses that are added. So you can see how fast um, a specific champion is actually going. So going into Fire Knight, we have a plus 20 because of Life Arena. And so his true speed is going to be closer to 361. But then with Razzlevark in the team, Cardiel, for an example, will be going closer to like 381. Fully booked. Cruelty Blessing. Here are the Masteries. Here's Stagnite. No particular set. The only thing that mattered was going fast. A little bit of damage, but not really... 
but we're just prioritizing speed and accuracy so that he can land his decreased speed and decreased attack and defense uh, reliably. Here are the masteries. Alright, here is Farragut the Fat. I do have a guide on this one if you want to go check that out. Uh, he's in Swift Parry and Divine Speed. That just happens to be the case, but uh, you don't have to put him like this. All I cared about was making him fast and accurate with some damage. So he has almost 5k attack, crit capped, well, over crit capped, and some crit damage as well. And then almost 300 speed. Ideally, you would have more accuracy and more HP and defense just so he has a little more survivability and he's able to place the HP burns and the poisons. But here are his masteries. Nut is in no particular set either. I do think he could benefit from being in a set, but in order to get him to do what I needed him to do at the time that this was built, um, this just happens to be what he's in. Now, he does have almost 5k attack at 251 speed, 100% crit rate, 102, and then 271 crit damage with 423 accuracy to land the debuffs, as well as the pushback turn meter with the freeze because you need to have this debuff place, otherwise the hard fire knight is not going to have his turn meter decreased. You put phantom touch on him, here are the masteries, and then here are the presets for anybody wanting to do hard fire knight 10, and you guys can build this. We're starting out with Razzlevarg's A3 into the A2. Round 2, we're only going to open with the A3, but close everything out for um, the other active abilities. And then round 2, we're going to open or prioritize A3 into A2. For Nut, we're going to close out Blessed Bash for round 1 and 2. And then we're going to close out A2, opening with the A1 to try to get the shield down. And then we're going to leave Blessed Bash open to... Uh, do whatever it needs to do. Sometimes it'll hit the shield, but again, like I said, this team hasn't been uh, fine-tuned completely yet. I'm still working on it. Cardiel will open with his ally attack, but close out again. Round two, same deal. Round three, we're just going to prioritize his ally attack. Stagnite is going to open and close out with his decreased defense and decreased attack. Same thing here for round two. Remember, we're trying to clear through the waves, and then for round three, we're just going to open with the A1. And then for Farrakh and the Fat, we're going to open with the A3 and then close out. Same thing here, just like Cardiel. And then for round 3, we're going to prioritize the ally attack and then do the A2. Okay, so let's go ahead and go into the run here uh, for Hard Fire Knight 10. Everybody's going to open with their moves. Well, I guess not everybody, but like Cardiel and Farrakh and the Fat will use their ally attack. Wave 1 is going to be relatively easy because we have the decrease defense set up going into round 2 or wave 2. It's going to take a little bit of extra time just because we're not setting up that decrease uh, defense here. I, I guess I could change the presets, maybe test that out to see if clearing through the waves here is a lot faster. Uh, that does seem to be where a good chunk of the run is being spent, trying to clear through wave 2. I don't have a champion or a team yet that specifically helps us in terms of wave clearing. No huge AoE hitters. I mean, like, Nut does his A2 AoE, but it's not always uh, available at the right time. And Farrakhan takes the stun. So I might try that. I, I might try opening up Stagnite's A2, uh, at least for wave 2. And then here... Just because we're doing the A1s, this takes a little bit of time. But when you see us go into the actual boss fight up against the Hard Fire Knight, he is going to have a full 21 counts of his shield. And Cardiel, as well as Farrakhan the Fat, are going to use their ally attack. And it's nice to have Razzlevarg and Nut here at the same time because it's no longer just Nut using his A1, his multi-hitter. We also have Razzlevarg, who's going to be using his multi-hitter to help bring the shield down. We have decrease speed. If you guys remember from doing stage 6, decrease speed is huge. It's pretty much imperative because the hard fire knight is going so fast. I think what enables us to do this particular um, run now is the fact that we have Razzlevark in this team. He just brings so much to the team, specifically increase speed because the issue that I was running into before was that my team wasn't going fast enough, but now that we have Razzlevar to place 
the increased speed, were able to keep up with the Fire Knight. The only thing that I, I kind of fear is that you can see that the turn meter of the boss is going up pretty fast. So because Nut is the only person here decreasing the turn meter, it, it always looks like he gets up close to taking a turn. And there are a few times where he does end up taking a, a turn and the run goes an extra like 30 seconds longer. But it's still pretty consistent. And like I said, haven't fine-tuned this yet. I just sort of saw that someone was using Razzlevarg and wanted to scrap the team together. So I wanted to share that with you guys here. So let's go ahead and do another run where I actually take off the don't use setup and we just let Huntmaster do his thing for round two and keep the presets the same. Let's go ahead and run it now. All right, so same deal, clearing through the waves. And I guess it would also help to see that this actually is pretty consistent. So we're going through the wave clearing here with the decrease defense. Yeah, wave one is usually a lot easier to get through because we have the decrease defense down. So now I think that I opened up for wave two, uh, stagnates decrease defense and decrease attack. This will be a lot faster. He does have a relatively low cooldown for his A2. Do any of you guys use Skrank? Skrank seems like one of those champions that uh, everybody always says is really good, but I've never actually built or used. Everybody talks about him. And we have Riho Bone Spear. I did use Riho to do stage 24 of Phantom Shogun in like 16 seconds. She's part of my team for that. And then, yep, yeah, Riho doesn't hit hard enough. And so now we're just going to A1 our way. A1 away. There it is. And then now we're going to go up into the boss. So yeah, it seems like we got there pretty easily. About 1 minute, 1 minute and 10 seconds. See how this goes. Yeah, I'm so happy to finally have a team to do Hard Fire Night 10 because for the longest time, the longest time, I was just stuck on on doing um Hard Fire Night 6, and I felt like I was missing out. I actually have to check the drop rates because I don't remember what the drop rates were for um, Hard Fire Night 6 versus 10. I do have a chart here somewhere. Let's see if I can find it. Hard mode drops. Okay, so here here's a, a difference here. So Hard Fire Knight 6 versus Hard Fire Knight 10. 6-star six mythical drop rates are going to be 0.96 here as opposed to pretty much double that, uh, nearly double that at 1.6 on stage 10. So there is a huge difference. And then mythical, or sorry, legendary 6-star pieces, stage 6, 5% versus 5.76. So if you're get, I guess if you're looking for just the six star legendary there's not too much of a difference i'm always okay settling for stage six just to, just because it's it seems to be a lot easier to get to for the most part as opposed to stage 10. brimstone proking that came from Razzlevarg. and then having the decrease attack i think i already mentioned is wonderful as he does hit hard, the Fire Knight boss does hit hard. The Fire Knight boss hits hard. It looks like if I didn't have that decrease attack buff, debuff, that probably would have nuked my team. So it's a good idea to have somebody to, to do that. And here it is. A lot of people were saying Yakarl is a great champion for Hard Fire Knight. Yakarl is another champion that I've I've summoned, and he's just been sitting in my vault ever since I got him from doing Tag Team Arena. I've seen him a few times in Arena, but I've never actually used him. I don't even know if I have him booked. So it seems like I made the right move by taking Kaimar out and putting Razzlevarg in. But there is another champion that I'm thinking about. Let me know what you guys think after watching this one right here.